Short row shaping is the technique most knitters probably associate closest with the knitting of a sock and the, particularly with the turning of the heel. So you can see here on this sock, it's the short row shaping which created this little sort of pocket, if you will, into which your heel fits and sits when you wear the sock. So that's probably the most commonly used application of short row shaping. However, um, I also love to use the technique for shoulder seams to avoid the jog. I also like to use short row shaping if I need to build a dart in to accommodate a curve of fullness in a sweater. And in particular, lately, it's been used an awful lot of designs to create interesting shapes in either knitted shawls, like the popular um, wingspan shawl from Ravelry. Um, also in this little baby blanket here where I've actually knit a circle based on doing short rows and creating these wedges. So it's not just for turning heels, it's great for darts, it's great for interesting shapes, it's also wonderful for avoiding the jogs in shoulders. So I want to show you how to do a short row and it's actually really very simple. The pattern will tell you to knit over so many stitches and then wrap and turn. And all that simply means is, okay, so for example here I've knit over to the number of stitches the pattern is called for. So you can see I'm in the middle of a row, I haven't finished the row yet. Now it, the pattern will call for you to wrap and turn. And basically all that means is they want you to wrap this working yarn around this next stitch. And that will help avoid the gap. If all you did was turn around and purl back, okay, you're going to create a big gap in your fabric and that will be unattractive. So the wrap and turn is what eliminates that space. So to wrap, if we're on the knit side, which we are, we're going to bring the working yarn between the needles to the front. We're going to slip the stitch from the left needle to the right needle. Now bring our working yarn to the back again between needles so you can see I've started the wrap around that stitch. Now I need to get that stitch back on the left needle so I'm just going to slip it back. So there's the wrap. I have wrapped this working yarn around that stitch. The wrap is done. Now I turn and the directions will then tell you to purl back, providing you're on working stock and knit anyway. So then you'll purl back to the beginning of the row or whatever point your pattern is telling you to work to. And then you will knit another short row depending on the pattern. It may then tell you to knit over to within one stitch of the last wrap and turn or it may tell you to knit within two stitches all of that depends on the shaping that the designer is trying to achieve. But it's really easy to see where your last wrap is. So you see here on this stitch, that's the wrap, and it's pretty recognizable because wherever you have wrapped a stitch, you're going to see a bigger gap between your stitches, because I've already done a few on this sample here. So you can see that there's a bigger gap between these two stitches, and that's because this one is wrapped, and between these two stitches, because this stitch is wrapped, then there is between these two, because this stitch is not wrapped. So it's easy to identify the most recently wrapped stitch because you will see a gap there. So if your pattern has said knit to within one stitch of the previous wrap, you can easily see this wrap because there will be the gap, and then you can look below the stitch on the needle and you'll see the little bar there. It almost looks like a pearl bump. That's an indication that you wrapped that stitch. So most patterns will then tell you to wrap and turn. So again, yarn to the front, slip the stitch to the right needle, bring your yarn to the back between the needles, put that stitch back on the left needle, there's your wrap, now turn and go back. Now that I have created my shaping, and maybe you can see here what this series of little short rows did for me, this was where I started and now I've ended up with a wedge because the stitches on this side have been knit m more times than the stitches over here because of each of these short rows that we that I demonstrated. So I now have my wedge shape and now I want to go back to knitting even. So on this row back, in order to close these gaps, you're going to knit the wraps together and also to hide the wraps, you're going to knit the net wraps together with the stitch that they wrapped. And now my method for doing that, what I find sim most simple, is to pick the wrap up first on the tip of my right needle, 
then pick the stitch up that's on the needle, and then knit the two together. And I do it in sort of a, a two-step method. First I knit the stitch that was on the needle, and then I pass the wrap over. So let me show you that again. But you can do whatever works for you. I just find this simplest. So I pick up the wrap and uh, put it on the tip of the right needle. I insert the tip of my right needle through the stitch I'm trying to knit, and I knit that stitch, and then I pick up that wrap and pass it over the stitch I just knit. So knit, pick up the wrap, pick up the stitch, knit the stitch, and pass the wrap over it. Okay, so that has completed my row, and you can see here that the wraps are no longer showing as little pearl bumps or horizontal bars, so I've hidden those, and I have no gaps. And that is the purpose of the wrap and turn. So one last thing I just wanted to show you, um, because patterns are written differently, and depending upon what the shape is that the designer's trying to achieve, they may have you work your short rows differently. So for example, if these are my knit stitches, and um, this pattern, for example, might say, knit four, wrap and turn the next stitch, and then you purl back, which of course on this side is going to show as a knit. Then in this case, it's knit over to one stitch less than the previous, or one stitch before the previous wrap. So I knit to here, I have one stitch left before the previous wrap, wrap and turn it, purl back. If I knit over to one stitch before the previous wrap, and then wrap and turn that one, so by doing one stitch less, I'm creating a sharper angle. Other patterns may have you um, knit over to two stitches before the previous wrap, as in this example here. And you can see what that does is just change the slope. So other patterns may have you do four or five or seven. It's all in the hands of the designer, but what they're the difference is in what they choose to have you do is going to change the slope of your shaping. And so the uh, possibilities for shaping using this technique are really versatile 